Mauer has been in business for 150 years, but they've only been building coasters for the past 30. In that time, the company has built a wide range of spinning and wild mouse coasters, but they've also introduced some innovative thrill coasters such as the Sky Loop. Now, the company is heavily pushing their spike coasters. So in this video, I will rank the top 20 coasters from Mauer that I've personally experienced. Before starting the countdown, I need to note that I have not been to China. Fortunately, I have ridden clones of their highest profile coasters over there, so I will touch on those when appropriate. I also have not experienced their first coaster in Venus GP because Space World was closed in my lone visit to Japan. This unique looping coaster has since been relocated to Himeji Central Park, so maybe I can experience it one day. I also did not get to experience G-Force at Drayton Manor before its removal, nor have I experienced its clone in Iraq. Lastly, I have reviews for several of these coasters, including everything in the top three. Number 20. The Standard Wild Mouse The base Wild Mouse coaster has some variability depending how hard the trims hit, but at its peak, the first half has strong laterals on the hairpin turns, and the second half offers some airtime pops on the sharp dips. Number 19. Twist Tricks at Dreevleet This is a bizarre spinner that feels more like a flat ride. The coaster layout is quite dull and simple. It is a short, slow spiral around a garden, but this ride spins more than most teacup rides. Picture those high-speed spins on a tilt-a-whirl chained together. You are sure to come off dizzy. Number 18. Naga Bay at Bobby on Land This spinner has a wonderful location above the pathways and water. It creates some really cool views on and off-ride. I also really like this ride's layout. However, the pacing is killed by a series of harsh trim breaks. You'll still spin, but most of the elements feel slower and weaker than they otherwise should be. Number 17. The SC2000 Coasters This is the company's most popular spinning coaster layout, and that's fine because it's a decent ride. The initial drop is quite the thrill if you take in reverse. Then you can get some good spinning if you have an off-balanced car. The one thing that can vary mightily installation to installation is how hard the trim brakes hit. This impacts the pacing and spinning. Whirlwind at Seabreeze and Spider at Lagoon are two of the best examples of this layout I've experienced. Number 16. Salama at Linen Maki. This custom spinner is uniquely placed above the Parks River Rapids ride. The layout helically winds about, yet it did not induce as much spinning as I expected. However, the initial drop and horseshoe turn are fun, and there's very little braking so this ride holds its speed well. Number 15. Sky Dragster at Skyline Park This is the only spike coaster I've experienced to date, and it also happens to be the prototype. This is a powered coaster, but the initial straightaway feels like a strong coaster launch with how it accelerates. Then you head through a quirky layout. There are no notable drops, but there are some tight helixes that are enjoyable especially because the trains leave you so exposed. Number 14. Insider at Wiener Prater This is a multi-sensory experience. The queue line has a mirror maze and a fun sci-fi theme. Then the main layout is overwhelming, as you have electronic dance music and lasers flying in every which direction. All these elements are especially disorienting because this is another spinning coaster. This one has a basic layout that's identical to the company's original Wild Mouse coasters, Except, you will spin a lot if you're in an off-balanced car. The downside with this coaster is that it has some severe braking. This hurts the pacing, and it can cause you to whack the side of the car because you can't see the brakes coming. Number 13. Fiorano GT Challenge at Ferrari World This is a strange launch coaster. It seems to take inspiration from Disneyland's old rocket rods. First, you have four LSM launches on each side. None are particularly powerful, but you keep having the need to accelerate because each launch section is a break shortly thereafter. Second, the turns are completely unbanked. This is the ride's greatest thrill element because you get some wicked laterals here. Then this coaster also offers a long ride and most importantly, one of the best executed racing elements of any coaster. The two tracks are side by side the entire time. Number 12. Crushes Coaster at Walt Disney Studios This is a plus SC2000 coaster. For one, you have a fun little dark ride sequence at the start. This is a Disney coaster after all. Then the main layout has some fun music and psychedelic lighting effects, but not enough to reveal the full layout. This makes the ride extra disorienting. 
Despite having to operate at a higher capacity, this one does not break too harshly, so the spinning is very strong. Just beware this ride's Q line. Number 11, Cagliostra Magic Land. This is another indoor mower spinning coaster, but this one is a fully custom layout, and the setup shocked me. You see this large show building, but you only go halfway up it. Yet, you have a sizable drop. That's because the ride is built into a pit below ground level. This caught me off guard in my first ride. This is especially because the ride is in total darkness. That initial drop is the highlight, but the rest of the layout is full of twists and helixes with minimal braking, so you will spin plenty. Number 10, Skyloop. This model has some sensational hang time. The vertical lift bends backwards, fully inverting riders. This transition and subsequent barrel roll have several seconds of hang time, and it's sort of freaky. Then you have another roll that leads to a forceful dive loop. On most, you then rock back and forth getting a mix of hang time and weightlessness. And each time you pass through the station, you get some more positive G's. The one downside with this coaster is the finale. You stop on the vertical lift and the restraint, which rests against your tummy, will give you a gut punch from the abrupt stop. Number 9, Tarantula Parque de Atracciones de Madrid. This is a different spinning coaster. Most focus on twists, turns, and helixes. Tarantula does not, so the spinning is not as strong as others. However, this one compensates with a series of good and sizable drops because this coaster is built on a hill. They pack a nice punch if you take them in any direction but forwards. Number 8, Spinball Wizard Alton Towers. This is yet another spinner. This one starts with two sizable drops. The second one is particularly sweet because you're spinning for it. The ride does have a lot of block zones that will slow you down, but the ride thankfully keeps regaining its speed afterwards, and the spinning is solid for the duration of the ride. Number 7, Formula X at Dreevleet. This ranking would also apply to Crazy Car in China, as that ride is a clone. This is a small and compact X-Car coaster, but it has some really good elements. It starts off with a forceful LSM launch, then there's a dive loop with hang time at the top and crushing G's in the pullout. The hill midway through has some ejector airtime, and the corkscrew offers ridiculous hang time with those lap bar restraints. And this ride is extremely smooth, unlike some of the other X-Cars higher on this list. Number 6, Fry Shoots at Byron Park. To contrast, this is the roughest X-Car coaster. The train rattles start to finish. Thankfully, the lap bars prevent any head banging, but this is one that could be tricky to marathon. And that's a shame because this is otherwise a great ride. It starts with a nice LSM launch. Then there are four wonderful inversions. The inverted top hat has hang time. The loop has okay power. The first heartline roll has hang time while the second one really whips you through it. Dragon Legend is a clone of this ride in China that could potentially rank higher if it runs smoother. Number 5, Dragon's Fury at Chessington World of Adventure. I love this spinner's layout. It is a larger, sprawling one as opposed to the usual compact and self-contained layout. The ride has enough changes of direction to keep the spinning consistent throughout between all those helixes and s-bends, then this coaster features a trio of fantastic drops, and as always, they hit particularly hard if you experience them going backwards. This is one of the most complete spinning coasters out there. Number 4, Abismo a Parque de Atracciones de Madrid. This is the one extended sky loop, and I love everything except this coaster's finale. You have a similarly thrilling inverted chain lift at the start. You get that delightful hang time in the lift and initial barrel roll. Then the dive loop back down offers some more hang time at the top, followed by strong positive G's. And those G's are carried through a powerful overbank that causes me to gray out. You then have two airtime hills. The first is a big camelback with sustained ejector. The second is more like a dip that gives some floater going back into the station. The ride tracks very smoothly, however, you have the same uncomfortable stop on the vertical lift due to the bars resting on your stomach. Number 3. Vinjas of Fantasia Land. This spinning coaster is two separate and different tracks in fear and force. From the pathways, you can see some thrilling drops and a series of turns and helixes that'll have the car spinning fast. But what truly makes this ride special are a series of tricks hidden from view. I don't want to spoil them here, but I do talk about them in my review. But these tricks are easily the best part of the ride, 
and they'll definitely catch a first timer off guard. Number 2, Shock at Magic Land. This X car coaster is a punchy ride. The LSM launch has solid power, and then you have an intense first half. There's this large camelback with great ejector airtime that is followed by a giant non inverting loop with some airtime and laterals. Then you have one of the snappiest overbanks of any coaster. You slow way down after the mid course brake run, but the final barrel roll uses that to its advantage to offer incredible hang time. And fortunately, this is another one of the X car coasters that runs very smoothly. And coming in number one is Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket at Universal Studios Florida. I know this ride has its many haters, but I love it. This X car coaster doesn't track the best. The trains can shuffle, but not enough to cause pain or discomfort with those restraints. The ride does have a ton of mid-course brake runs, but again, I don't mind this because you get good air time entering and exiting each one. On that note, this coaster has excellent forces. You have several forceful turns, no shortage of air time, and that awesome non-inverting loop combining negative and lateral Gs. And this ride features some of the best onboard audio of any coaster to make the whole experience a pure joy ride. So those are the top 20 coasters Mauer has built that I have personally experienced. I really hope more parks give them a chance with their custom X-Car coasters because those rides show a lot of promise. What are your favorite rides from Mauer? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this countdown, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like and you considered subscribing because there will be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.